All right, so what's the acid flow that allows the attacker to control the initialization flow? Let's find out. So we are going to start at this function. We said to assume that dir adder and num pages were both attacker controlled values. And we said that for this RDMA PCI DMA map, to assume that if the thing that's going in is acid, then it's really just an attacker controlled address that is going to be mapped into memory. And then whatever it's pointing at is going to be an attacker controlled uh, address as well, or you know, data at that address. So this dir adder is assumed to be acid. And that's going to mean that this dir is also acid. So dir comes out, it checks to make sure that it's not zero. If it's zero, it errors out. If it's not, then it goes in here and it treats it like there's another address at dir of zero. So dir of zero is gonna be acid. And that's going to mean that this table is also going to be acid. All right, same thing again. It's going to assume that table of zero has something in there. It's going to map it and that's going to give us back ring state. So there we go. Table of zero taints the value that's stored at ring state. All right, then it checks if that's zero, and if not, it if so, it errors out, and if not, it continues on. Then it's going to do an increment on that value. And then now we're into this function. So in this function, we've got that ring state being passed in. We've got num pages being passed in, which we said up here was attacker controlled. Now you can see right away that we've got some acid math going on and acid math is as bad as an acid bath. And therefore this could be a problem. This could cause an integer underflow. If num pages was zero, zero minus one equals all of a sudden a really large number times, you know, something divided by something. Or right here, it's just, you know, num pages minus one. So that could potentially be a problem and, you know, we can keep an eye on that, but that's not specifically what we're looking for here. So we've got this table, which again was acid, and it's being passed in. So let's keep drilling down. So now this table and then n pages are both acid. So let's see how those are used. So again, that n pages, we said there was some acid math going on there, which isn't good. So this n pages could be zero, for instance, at the time that it's, you know, the subtract, it could be passed in as one in the previous one, and then minus one equals zero. And then down here, n pages could be zero, and you could have a zero size allocation. Now again, that always depends on how the allocator works. So some allocators will allow someone to create a zero sized allocation. And then that's a great opportunity for heap overflows because basically anything you touch in that heap allocation would be, you know, uninitialized and it would be just, you know, zero size. So it would overflow immediately. But in this particular case, this gmalloc does not behave that way. So if you pass in a zero size, it'll return back null and have an error. So we've got the end pages, you know, suspicious, but not specifically what we're looking for. You know, again, if this was some really large value, if it had integer underflowed, then maybe an allocation would occur. Maybe it wouldn't, depends on, you know, how much RAM is available and those kind of things. But we're looking for an uninitialized access bug. So if that had returned, you know, a zero size allocation, that would be a potential place where any access of this thing would be uninitialized data access. But instead, we now focus on that table. So if table is attacker controlled, and if it's basically saying there's going to be however many entries as there are pages, let's just assume that the attacker passed in some pages that is a small positive value. Let's call it three or five or something like that. I'll use three because the POC uses three. So if n pages is three, and if table of zero is null, then it's just going to continue. And if table of one is null, it's just going to continue. And then if table of two is non-null, then it won't continue. It'll skip past this, it'll get down here, and it'll run this, you know, mapping thing. But now at this point, if this table of two is non-null, but it's some completely invalid address, then this DMA map may fail. And if that fails, that returns null. So let's assume they passed in some completely garbage address where it can't do a mapping and it returns back null. So let's say that is set to null. At this point, if that is null, then it's going to say if not zero, it's gonna be if true. And then it's going to go here, it's going to set an error value, it's gonna print out something, 
then it's going to go to out free. Now down here, i has been successfully incremented throughout all of this looping. So it was 0, 1, 2, and so i is now equal to 2. Then it's going to call RDMA PCI unmap on i, and you know for the for the ith one, the second one, well that's going to be null to start with. But what's more interesting is once i is decremented, and we start looking at ring pages of 1, well, ring pages of one was never initialized, was never mapped, nothing was ever done with it. We basically allocated spot for three pointers here, but the first pointer was skipped, the second pointer was skipped, and the third pointer was intentionally invalid. So as it's decrementing down and calling on map, when it gets to you know everything other than the last value, each of those is going to be an uninitialized value right here. So it's going to be a pointer, it's going to be an address, and it's an address on the heap. So therefore, an attacker could potentially control it if they can control the contents of the heap before this allocation occurs, right? So they do some heap spraying, they do some heap feng shui, whatever, in order to make sure that the heap contains attacker-controlled values, which subsequently will be used in this malloc. And then down here, it'll be basically, all of a sudden, these things, this parameter, is going to start to be treated as acid. So for i equal to, we're going to say 0, 2, let's say I'm call it inclusive 0, I'm using the mathematical notation of inclusive of 0, and then exclusive of uh, num uh, n pages minus 1, right? So uh, basically n pages 1, I guess it is still technically, you know, an attacker controlled value, no, sorry, it, uh, because this fails and then that gets set to zero, so that's null. So all the other values are ultimately going to be attacker or attacker controlled by virtue of being uninitialized. And so what would the problem be there? Well, this will take that attacker controlled value. So now we're going to say that buffer is acid. And basically, we could keep following that down through here, and eventually we're going to find uninitialized data access of that. Now, the original author of this vulnerability uh, said that, you know, this was just causing a crashing bug. I think that there is the potential that if this was used in conjunction with an information disclosure, which you'll learn about later in the class, and it would ultimately turn into a use after free, which you'll also learn later on in class. So follow with me here as we drill down. So buffer, we're going to keep assuming, is acid. And we once again drill down buffer in this. Buffer is acid, buffer is acid, drill down. And then now when we get here, we have a check if buffer not equal to bounce buffer. Then it goes into this. Now, specifically, here's why I think that it would require something like an information disclosure vulnerability. So basically, an attacker would want to take this attacker-controlled buffer, they would want to pass it into this function, and they would want this MR to be returned as something that is actually valid. So the sort of uh, thing that can be maliciously freed is going to be this MR. So down here, you pass in the buffer, and so this is now pointer is acid, and so if the attacker just sets it to any random thing, well, that's not super useful to them. They want to turn this pointer into a real thing that will allow this to return successfully, and so this, this block MR will be a revalue, real value. So again, pointer is acid, and go into here, and it's basically looking things up in, you know, address caches and mapped things and stuff like that. So again, the key point is they just want to set it to something that they know will succeed in there so that this will succeed and that this will come back with a valid block memory region. If that memory region is valid, then it goes here and it checks if it's not null. We're going to assume it's not, so it continues on. And then the interesting bit, you know, these may or may not be true, but the interesting bit would be right here. So the memory region unref of MR, now we're going to be assuming so to be clear, right now we're assuming that the MR is not acid, but it's something that the attacker is going to want to cause to be freed. 
they're going to want to force it to be freed so that later on they can cause an allocation of memory and then that will be reallocated for this same sort of data structure uh, and then subsequent use of this specific thing that they just looked up here will have now attacker control data inside of it instead of just the correctly initialized values. So drilling down MR and you want all this to be valid, you want that MR owner to be successful, and then object unref and this is again just something that the attacker has chosen, this object, 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 check the assert, fetch, finalize, you want to get into here. This is again still some object that the attacker controls, and then basically this object, they want to cause these things like dinit, 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 oops. Hold on a second. Do you need it? Oh, sorry. This one right here is what they want to get to. So object of free. So basically, they would intentionally be trying to force an object to be maliciously freed all of a sudden out from underneath the system. And then later on, when the system uses it, it wouldn't realize that it's been freed already. Uh, and then, you know, this can cause problems. Again, we'll talk about this later on in class. Uh, getting ahead of myself a little bit. But this is just to say that by combining two other types of vulnerabilities, uh, that we learn in the class by combining this vulnerability, this uninitialized data access with a uh, information disclosure vulnerability, I think it could be turned into a third form, which would be a use after free, which then could potentially lead to code execution in a way that this thing can't directly in its current form as just an uninitialized access vulnerability. All right, what was the fix for this? Well, it's pretty simple as most uninitialized things are. It's just initialized stuff. So the core bug happened because a malloc occurred for n elements, for n pages worth of elements, but then the attacker could keep skipping, skipping, skipping past these pages of i and not have them actually be filled in with anything until deallocation time when they would be used uninitialized. So if we do a g malloc zero, then it's going to be all zeroed locations in here. And so now these would not be attacker controlled values at the time they're passed into the unmap, they would just be zeros. And no problem, no fuss, no muss, and it's all good. 